Hi, I'm Darlene Carmen, and welcome to the show. My guest decided to challenge her fears head on, rid herself of feeling powerless against the emotional scars of her youth. She wanted to change her life. She did so by distancing herself from people she felt were toxic, getting a college degree and a new career. Ten years later, she realized that all these outward changes did not change how she felt inside. In Tiffany Hawkins' book, Truth Shift, she shares the tools she developed that made the change from being a scared girl to one in charge of her life. Hey, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I found your book to be very inspiring. You had to deal with all of these painful, raw emotions and tons of anxieties <laughs> in order to change your life. And you were looking, your quest was to find more peace and truth. Mm -hmm. And in your book, you talk about the tools that you use that helped in this change. Where did these tools come from? Well, the tools exist. They exist for all of us. They exist for everyone. Um, our only challenge is to become aware of them and then, of course, to use them. And I know that that sounds kind of simplistic, but if you think about it, we actually do this already. Um, we do this what I call ego weaponry. So I'm talking about defensiveness, anger, uh, all these fearful reactions that we do every time we get upset. Hmm. Um, and so these kinds of things we do naturally, except that they're, they're um, weapons. They're not, they're not truthful. And so the tools of truth, with, which exist for all of us and that we just have to become aware of, once we use them, uh, we create better outcomes for ourselves. Okay. So these tools came from just basic knowledge of maybe you know, things that you've learned? Um, I have read many books. Um, however, a lot, of, a lot of the books I read, they were just kind of like concepts that sound really nice, you know? Like when Gandhi says, be the change that you want to see in the world. Oh, that's so lovely. But mm. how do you actually make that part of your life? Mm. And um, I had done so many things to change my life. I wanted to have self-esteem that I didn't feel. I, I, I wanted to have confidence. And I had so much anxiety, um, mm. especially, you know, changing careers and becoming a nurse. I mean, there's, there's a lot of anxiety that comes with that. And I couldn't understand why I wasn't getting anywhere, why I wasn't feeling the way I wanted to feel, especially after so much that I had done to, to change my life. And I'm like, why is this not happening? And in fact, it was almost getting worse. Oh, that's hard to believe. So, it's like, you're supposed to go so the other way. So I started looking into it a little deeper and, and, and just really trying to be open. And I realized at some point, okay, I'm missing something. Mm. I've done everything I can think of. I've read every self-help book I could find, and I'm missing something. And I wanted to know, what am I missing? And I think I started asking the right questions, finally. Mm. What, am I, what am I missing? What, what is not right here? And then that's when um, I started feeling a little bit more intuitive. And then that's when the tools just kind of they came. Just came to you. <laughs> they did. <laughs> I think, I think that's really exciting how, how that happened. Um, let's take a look at the toolbox. I think we have a toolbox here. <laughs> I love that concept. Let's see what they are. So truth shift is a, a mnemonic, so it's ex uh, extremely easy to follow, okay. but it's very powerful and, and carries an awful lot of meaning. Um, so uh, we start with T, which is truth. We have responsibility, unity, time, health. Um, and then we go on to the next one. our next one. The next one is going to be uh, simplicity. And then we have H for habits, uh, inspiration, forgiveness, and then we finish it off with truth mm. because everything is truth. 
And we'll so. talk a little bit more about these in depth. Uh, some of them, I, I like some of them uh, <laughs> a lot. But um, so this is a monumental thing you did. So what were your beginning steps for this? Well, um, when uh, these tools kind of came to me and took shape in my mind exactly as I have it, truth shift, I, um, I started to test them. Mm -hmm. I started to uh, test their validity. You know, as a nurse, we respect um, uh, evidence-based practice. So I needed to have evidence. And, and, I, and I needed to know what was different about truth shift tools as opposed to what we do to protect ourselves, which is what I call the ego weaponry. That's how I ego refer to weaponry. it. Ego weaponry. Yes. Mm. Okay. And so, you know, what, what makes it different? What makes it more effective? So I started to test them. Uh, one of the first things that I did was I used the tool of responsibility. And um, that's where I am responsible for what I create. I am responsible for the experiences that I have. And I create these experiences not just by what happens to me, which is how I always felt. I always felt very victimized by the world. Um, but I, I began to really feel and realize that I have some responsibility here. How much, I wasn't sure, but I knew that I had a, a, a role. So I started to test it. And the first challenge I did is I would not allow myself to say or think anything negative about anyone for 24 hours. Mm. I just wouldn't allow it. It's just like that was part of the challenge. And the first thing I realized is I had always thought that I was a pretty nice person because I never said anything mean to anyone that I could, you know, unless I was really upset, which wasn't very often on the outward. Yeah. And the first thing I realized is, wow, <laughs> there was all kinds of, you know, negative thoughts that would just pour out of my mind without me even thinking about it. And that was really uh, telling because I thought, wow, how much negativity am I spewing out and putting out there without even realizing what I'm doing? So when I changed it, every time I thought something negative and I caught myself, I would immediately replace it with something positive. And I continued to do this. And then I, I purposely thought nothing but positive thoughts and said nothing but positive things. And what I saw was an immediate um, response around me. Um, and I really liked it. And so I continued that challenge. Uh, so I did it another day and another day. And I really saw that my interactions were, were really going uh, unexpectedly well. And it was becoming more natural to think this way. Hmm. The one thing that I wasn't expecting was the support that I felt. That was something that I wasn't expecting. I really felt a very loving, supportive, authoritative energy that was like, OK, you're ready to learn now. Let's do it. Mm. And, and it became fun. Um, you talked about the ego weaponry. Yes. So let's talk about egos. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any? <laughs> um, how does that affect people? Um, well, so the first thing um, that I kind of came to realize about truth is not so much what truth is, but what it isn't. And mm. um, I really started to understand this thing that they call the ego. And it was very confusing at first because you would read so many different interpretations. And it really started to sound almost creepy. And I thought, <laughs> you know, what is this thing? And, and how does it become an it anyhow? And I came to realize um, that, you know, we are not our egos. It is just kind of like this false persona. However, it has such a huge voice. It has a huge voice. And what I came to realize is our egos, which is just kind of like this front, this protective front that we use to face the world. Yes. Um, it does not trust what it doesn't create. Mm. So whatever is truth doesn't come from the ego. And therefore, it just has no trust about it. Uh, and so it's not really going to allow you to make these changes easily. Um, I refer to the ego as a body of beliefs now, and I, I call it Bob. And that's to remind Bob. myself, Bob, for <laughs> body of beliefs, that this 
these feelings and these protectiveness and these weapons that I instantly want to hold up, yeah. they're just part of a belief system um, and, and they can change. And that's how I kind of got my power back away from this. Um, and so. So your Bob. Bob. <laughs> is actually for you. You think, right? You I think, think all of our you. egos are for us. It's yeah. just that they're not really generated by truth. truth. Um, and so therefore, they really, their programming is, is our belief system, our experiences, our perceptions. And it really tends to hold on to pain and negativity. Ooh. So, you know, it's we're protecting kind of, you. It is. And, and we're wired as human beings. You know, we've been around on this planet for a long time. We're wired to be protective. Our brains work that way to, to be protective. And so this sort of has the intention of protecting us. However, it, it goes on a negative. Mm. Um, and so that's what does not produce the uh, results that we want. And so sometimes we find ourselves in this pattern of negativity and always attracting more negativity. We have to find a way out of that trap. And, and how, how do people do that? How do they bypass the bobs? The so you egos? actually kind of have to get kind of tricky with it. <laughs> and you actually need to almost manipulate your own ego <laughs> so that it will allow you to even try something new. Um, or to think differently or to try new behaviors. You can do this very easily, um, but you just kind of have to do it. And that's where the, the tools of truth actually help quite a bit because there are certain tools that are very direct and then there's some that help us so indirectly. So in other words, like for example, the tool of health and the tool of inspiration, they naturally work with you um, and your spirit and so uh, when that happens, you just instantly feel better, you feel lighter, you become more open, and therefore you become more intuitive, and you are able to kind of get information that you couldn't quite get before simply by focusing on your health or focusing on something you love through inspiration, um, focusing on simplicity, little things like that. So. Um, that's kind of a way that you just automatically get yourself in a higher level, a, a little bit of a higher consciousness and open mm -hmm. up a little bit. And then things just kind of come and open to you as you need it, as it's meant for you. So am I hearing correctly that you want to use these tools all kind of at the same time mm -hmm. or as they're needed where maybe your ego is protecting you in some way and you see some how you could apply maybe a tool to make it work to there's no rules pitch. there's no rules there's absolutely no rules the mm -hmm. only rule is that you want to you're being mindful you are you are focusing your attention and your awareness on what is truth and what is not so what happens is is whenever we become upset or angry or hurt mm. it kind of triggers something from whatever past experiences we've had and we've all had plenty of things like that and so what happens is is our instant reaction is usually ego based um, mm. and we react really quickly and we just have weapons that we use whereas when you are focusing on using your truth tools you are, instead of reacting with um, your, your ego, you are responding with your spirit. You are calling mm. on your spirit. So we're shifting from what isn't real to what really is, because we really are spiritual beings in a physical body. That is something that our logic will argue with us probably until the day we die. Yeah. But we are. We are spiritual. We are connected. We are all united. We are all in this together. We are all working on the same plan, whatever that plan is. Um, and we are helping each other in many different ways. But it's hard to see that when you're feeling victimized all the time. It's hard to see that when you have your weapons with you all the time. And so we need to find a way, like I said, out yeah. of this trap. And the amazing thing is once you do really focus on being open to truth, whatever it is, whatever it is, 
uh, you feel this support and the acceleration that happens is amazing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I went 10, 20, you know, so many years feeling the same way no matter what I did. And then within a very short period of time, I started to feel so much differently wow. and so much better that it inspired me to want to share what I've learned. Wow. Yeah, I believe that you told me uh, not long ago that you, your purpose of the book is you wanted to reach people that maybe wouldn't read yes. self-help books. Is that true? Is that it is. I'm trying to reach a wide audience because uh, uh, these tools are helpful for all of us. Yes. It doesn't really matter what we already believe or don't believe. All you have to do is sort of try it mm -hmm. and everyone will feel a, a different response based on what they need at that time. So I, I really didn't want to close off anyone who just would not be receptive um, if they have particular religious beliefs that they are afraid yes. my book would conflict with. Yeah. It doesn't. I'm not challenging, nor is truth challenging, any belief you already have. I am not hmm. um, uh, here to declare what is truth. I am a student of what is truth, just like everyone else. Um, I just want to be open to it. I want better experiences. I want to feel joy and happiness. I want to enjoy my relationships. I don't want to destroy them. I want to live this life, and I want to do whatever it is that I was here to do. And, and I think we all want that. So let's see. So 10 years now, <laughs> ten, <laughs> 10 years you decided that the changes that you made were not working. No. So how many years now have you been working on the truth shift? Less than two. Less than two? Less than two. Wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you have any uh, tips that you could uh, give us to help people? Uh, the one thing that I did learn, because as I said, I have, I have uh, studied and researched and read so many things, and they all sounded great, but mm -hmm. it wasn't changing anything. It wasn't mm -hmm. transforming me. I could regurgitate it, but I didn't feel differently. Yes. And yes. I thought, this is where I need, this is where I'm missing something. And what I have learned is you really need to physically work with these tools. Tools are meant to be used. They're not meant to just be in a nice toolbox stored away. And isn't that a pretty box? And you never <laughs> use it. Just read about it. You, it's yeah. not a nice quote to put on your Facebook page and then, oh, that's a lovely quote. And then you go and <laughs> you have your day. Um, if you really want to transform energy, you need to use them. So I have a few techniques that I developed uh, that helped me. Okay. So for example, if I get um, upset for any particular reason, uh, now I will immediately realize that I have ego weaponry in my right hand. Now, the right side of our body is kind of dominated by the left side of our brain, which is our logic side. Um, and what I want to do is shift that. So I see these weapons in my, my hand. I feel defensiveness. I feel guilt. I feel blame. I feel judgment, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I will drop it. I will open my hand and I will drop it. And drop then your weapon. I will drop it. Okay. And then I will pick up a tool of truth, whatever it is that I feel that I need in the moment, whatever the situation is, and I will feel it in my left hand, which is stimulating the right side of my brain, which is my spiritual connection. Yeah. And so instantly something about that physical change works. Now really? that sounds silly hmm. it sounds simple but if you think about it any threat that we feel any threat that we perceive becomes a real threat to us it doesn't in our mind you know any anything that we feel is threatening or perceive as a threat biologically chemically we respond to it our minds are very very powerful so what we're trying to do and what i'm trying to bring awareness of is that it's actually very easy to change this and and use this power that we have and start controlling it um, maybe control isn't the right word maybe it's just awareness would be the right way to say 
But either way, that's what I'm doing. I'm using the power that I already have. And again, whenever you're using the powers of truth, there's this feeling that you get that is so much different than the feeling you get when you're using your weaponry. Um, there's a, a very loving, supportive strength and encouragement that you just feel. It's very hard to explain. You just have to, or describe, you just feel it. And you know it when it, when it happens. You know you're on the right track. You know you did it well. You know you responded well. You feel better. You don't forget what happened. It's just a much better outcome all the way around. Can you do this trick? Yes. <laughs> Can you do this trick? Anytime. Absolutely. I mean, in front of people. Absolutely. I mean, you could like maybe behind your back. No one would know what this means. If my hands are here yeah. and I do this. Yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't know what And I doing. do this and I open here and I can even do, no one knows what I'm doing. Yeah. That's what I like side. about my tools because yeah. I don't have to go uh, off in a corner and meditate. I don't have to yeah. do any particular things, I am just mindfully shifting my focus and I am being aware. I am being aware of what I say, what I do, what I think, and then what happens as a result. Mm. And usually when we're just reactive, we don't do that. <laughs> it, your, your tool of health, now in your book you talk about exercise yes. as being uh, nature's way of getting rid of stress. Absolutely. So how does your health tool, how does it help with the balance so we really need balance to function. Um, our bodies are already biologically uh, and physiologically designed to keep us in balance. It called, it's called homeostasis. And our bodies are always trying to do this from the moment we're born. A healthy body is perfect. Um, but the problem is, is that our behaviors and even our thoughts are always throwing off this balance. It throws off everything. It throws off our, our chemicals and our hormones and, and everything inside of us. We may look the same on the outside, but we don't feel as good. So we're always, our behaviors are always throwing off this balance and our bodies are always working to try and correct it. The more focus uh, uh, and loving attention you can give to your health, the more you stay in balance. And this balance is essential for us to have this intuition that I'm, that I'm calling on, for us to be intuitive, for us to be open to knowing something new or something different that is going to be helpful for us. Mm -hmm. We need that balance. balance. And, and so it feels good. exercise is good anyway. When so you exercise, you are naturally <laughs> relieving toxins from yeah. your body. When you breathe deep, you are naturally stimulating your parasymp parasympathetic nervous system, which calms you. Yeah. So you can, now let's say um, you're trying to change your behavior. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to make it last? You have to keep doing it. Keep doing it. Yeah. So every time you do a behavior, every time you think a thought, um, you create a neural pathway. And our body is designed to have these neural pathways so that we can do things without really thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're designed that way, and that's part of that safety mechanism that I'm talking about. Ah. If I can do behaviors naturally, then my mind supposedly can be aware of new dangers or threats. Uh, now, I really like this illustration here on your cover. So I wanted to ask you about the illustration, and um, what is the significance of it? Well, uh, the first thing is what I hope it signifies is that uh, it demonstrates so much of what we think is real mm -hmm. is really what is just in our minds. Being a television set, it reminds us that you can always change the view. Uh -huh. So what we see always changes as we change. Um, our perception gets better. We might be open to more information. We might learn something we didn't before. So no matter what our past, no matter what mistakes we've made, no matter how dark the channel is right now, <laughs> we can always change it. We can always shift. And so that's what it is. So that's what I got out of it. I, th I looked at this and I thought, television on her head. And I was thinking, <laughs> it's just simply saying, if you don't like the program, change the channel. That, that's the way I saw that. Right. Anyway, now, when people are practicing these tools, mm -hmm. what can they expect? I mean, all of them. When it's all going together, how do you know that? Uh, you will feel it. 
you will feel it. You can absolutely expect to uh, experience change, uh, positive change. And so uh, there's just, there's no way for me to describe the support that you feel where you just know you're on the right track. Um, however, uh, with repeated behaviors, your experiences teach you. They, you just automatically know that you're doing better and it feels so much better and your relationships improve, um, everything improves, your work improves, everything improves. So looking at the, the tools, mm -hmm. uh, one that I particularly like is inspiration. Mm -hmm. I would say that was kind of like the ultimate. Is it kind of like the, you know, I mean, inspiration, that's like very spiritual to me. For me, they're equal, so they're I equal. wouldn't say that, that it's the ultimate one, but it's definitely important. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in one way I think about it is that uh, often we do not take the time to do the things that we love to do. We are yes. so busy working. We are so busy being uh, what we think responsibility is. We are so busy uh, meeting everybody's needs and expectations. Uh, and we feel guilty, which is completely unnecessary, but we feel guilty if we're not doing, producing like we are expected to. Uh, when we are doing something that we really love, that's our, part of our talent that we're meant to do, you, you definitely uh, spiritually lift, and it's extremely important to do that. Mm, so it all works together. Well, it certainly has been working for you two years, and Less than you two years. feel so much better, and a thousand times all that better. drama or whatever is gone. <laughs> it's like, do you have another book in the works? I do. I do. I am working on another book that's going to go into more of the barriers to truth that we have. I'm going to explain them better, give some more examples, and try and uh, really help people get rid of those barriers because it's very easy to do yeah. once you sneak past. We're running out of time, but I wanted to know if there's anything else that you'd like people to know because I, I don't even know if I covered my questions I had for you. I have so much to talk <laughs> about. Is there any quick thing that you want to leave with people? They're worth it. They're worth it. People we are, are worth all worth it. it. We are absolutely worth it. We are all in this together. We all have a purpose. And it really does not matter how you feel, you are worth it. Uh, well, you I, will feel I, better. I agree with that. <laughs> you know, there's so much, it, it's not a huge book, no. but it is mighty. And there's so much more I would like to, we, we didn't even cover very many of, <laughs> of the Truth Shift tools. But anyway, I want to thank you so much thank for being here. Thank you for having here. me. I want to tell people out there that if you're not happy with the way things are going, if you're not happy with yourself, um, that you can do something about it. You can have the courage to take one little step and change something. Mm -hmm. And then one thing leads to another. And that's the way it goes. So um, may truth and um, peace be with you. And thanks for watching the show. Watch again. Would you mind to sign my book for me? Absolutely.